Hey CBC Music, I'm Director X, and these are five songs that changed my life. Nineteen eighty six, tricky, run DMC. This is significant for me because getting hip hop in Canada was hard. It was a very different time. It was not on the radio. Getting this stuff was hard and you just when you had an album you liked, you just played it and played it and played it. Run DMC had gone pop. Their records had crossed over. They had a record with Aerosmith, Walk This Way. It was the first hip hop album I ever got my physical hands on. And one of their other big records was Tricky. That record, I love that record. And I can still remember on that old record player being in the living room and listening to that. Think about that, kids. You wanted to listen to a song you liked. You had to go, there was a big, immovable thing that was connected into an amplifier. All this stuff, you couldn't just pick it up and take it to your room. You had to go downstairs, you had to carve out your time to listen to music. So that was, uh, that was a moment for me. Flavor in Your Ear Remix. That is Craig Mack, Biggie, LL Cool J, Rampage and Buster Rhymes. That was the beginning of this golden age of music video where they really became very, very important. That Craig Mack video was the beginning of some real art in our visuals. Hip hop used to be people in a bodega in New York City and you loved the culture, you loved how cool it was, but the art never came through. And hype really brought through the art. Right? It changed the visuals. He began to speak a language visually. You saw the force perspective set. You saw the bright lights from a ring light. You knew what that was, that wide lens that you got right in your face. This, this in-your-face art form literally became in your face with a lens that was best used when it was right here. It was really the beginning we all said, who's this director? It was the beginning of the director meaning something in hip-hop culture and eventually led to me being Hype's intern. But this was the the first step. Real Love, Mary J. Blige, 1992. A new era in hip hop, and coincidentally, uh, something that Puff Daddy, uh, P. Diddy, Brother Love, whatever you want to call him, Sean Combs, played a major part in. And it was the beginning of R&B and hip hop beginning to merge. R&B was very much its own thing. Hip hop was its own thing. And yes, it's black music, but they didn't really cross, right? And then here you had this R&B singer on a hard, straight hip hop beat. Change things in a massive way. Sometimes the innovation doesn't have to be big. It took the world by storm. And I remember being young, just being captivated by this combination of things. And as well, she is wearing a two black guys jersey in the music video. So th this is not only a significant record for me, but it was also for us in Toronto, a generation that felt very invisible to the rest of the world, even to the people here in the city. It was a, a, a moment for us to say, hey, hey, one of us is doing something. It said Toronto on her jersey. And that was a big deal for us. You used to call me on my cell phone. When you need my love. Hotline Bling. This changed my life because it changed my life. It is the iconic music video for maybe all till now. So when I get introduced, especially to people outside the culture, they'll go, he did Hotline Bling. Hotline Bling was really in this new age, in the Instagram age, in the internet age, in the social media age is the best way to put it, was the first video that broke through and then you saw the audience get involved and the memes upon memes upon memes, the jokes and the, the, they got in on it and now it wasn't just about the art you were making but it is about the audience's reaction to it and how they're inspired and what they create from this thing and it doesn't happen every time so when it happens it's very special and for me um, being the creative force behind that visual uh, it was important to my career, my life, uh, but also to do something that the culture reacted to. I mean, Donald Trump is in a Hotline Bling parody on Saturday Night Live. Call me on the cell phone. Moments, these are moments in time, you know? I'll be that, uh, Red Man.
this changed my life because it was the music video that pushed me into the X is a, one of the one of the directors. So Red Man, I'll be that was a big record, but aided by the music video, and that was another one. Your music video pushed the video into a higher or pushed the record into higher heights. That was a big deal. The I'll be that video was very much a commentary or poking fun at a bunch of things. So. We have Red Man in the forced perspective set. That's when the set is shaped to look like it's going up and he's performing in that. But we put all happy faces in there because that was, you know, hey, we're not being too serious. He was in a Victoria's Secret commercial. He was in a long distance phone company commercial, which doesn't exist anymore. So this video was a big hit. Everyone loved it. There's this uh, great little comedy sketch in the middle where a girl crashes her bike against a car. Could have been a king. concept of the video was a lot of fun. We had a bunch of comedy in there, really let Red Man shine as this MC who's also funny. And after that, I was in. I was, I was a director making hip hop, R&B, music videos. And uh, luckily, more often than not, they were good. And I stayed in the game. So is there a common thread? I don't know. I mean, maybe someone can do a psychoanalysis of it, but for me, these were five records that changed my life.